Welcome to our video on independent events. In this video, we are first going to determine whether or not events are independent of one another. And then secondly, we're going to use a new equation to help us determine the probability of both independents occurring. Let's begin by determining what it means to be independent. So if the probability of a second event does not depend on the first event, we describe these events as being independent events. So for example, if I rolled a die on a standard six-sided die, and then I selected a card from a standard 52 deck of cards, I would have two events there that are completely independent of one another. The probability of rolling a die does not influence the probability of selecting a certain card from a deck. So this would be an example of independent events. Now, to determine the probability that both independent events occur, we can use this equation. So if I'm trying to find the probability of event A and event B, I would take the probability of event A and simply multiply it by the probability event B. Let's take a look at an example that has some numbers in it. So the first one says, determine the probability of rolling a five on a standard red die and a three on a standard blue die. So in this scenario, we have two events. The first event is rolling a five on the red die, and the second event is rolling a three on that blue die. Now, rolling a specific number on the red die has absolutely no impact on the value that's rolled on the blue die, or vice versa. And so we would describe these events as being independent of one another. So it wants to know what the probability of both of these events is. So the probability of event A and the probability of event B. So we can use that equation that we just introduced. So we know that there is one five on a standard die. A standard die has six possible sides. So the probability of rolling a five on the red die is one out of six. Then if we look at the blue die, there is one three on a standard die. And again, there are six sides on a standard die. So the probability of rolling a three on that second die is also one out of six. So when I multiply those together, there's a one in 36 chance um, that I can roll both a five and a three on the two die. Okay, let's look at another one just to make sure that we've got it. It says, Tanya estimates that her probability of passing French is 0.7 and that the probability of passing chemistry is 0.6. So we've got two parts to this question. It first asks us to calculate the probability that she will pass both French and chemistry. And then the second one wants us to know, or wants us to figure out the probability of passing French, but failing chemistry. So let's start in the scenario where she passes both. That's probably the better scenario anyways. So if she passes both, we're looking to calculate the probability of passing French and passing chemistry. And we already know the probability of passing French is 0.7 and that the probability of passing chemistry is 0.6. And so all we need to do is multiply those two values together to get a probability of 0.42. So she's got a 42% chance of passing both of them. Okay, so let's look at um, a different scenario then. So what's the probability of her passing French but failing chemistry? Okay, so we already know that the probability of her passing French is 0.7, but let's look at the probability of failing chemistry. So if there's a 60% chance that she passes chemistry, then there's only two options. She either passes or she fails. So 100% minus that 60% of passing would mean that the she that she's got a 40% chance of failing. So the probability of failing chemistry is 0.4. Okay. 
So then we can use the same equation that we used in part A, but this time we're looking for the probability of passing French and failing chemistry. So we know the probability of passing French is 0.7, the probability of failing chemistry is 0.4, and so when we multiply those together, we get 0.28. So in this quick little video, we first identified what it means to have independent events. And then um, in the second part of the video, we looked at two quick examples where we had to determine the probability of the events and then figure out what the probability of both of those events were, given that they were independent events.